like Adriano said, I, I, I'm going to talk today about lodging in convents and monasteries in Italy. I, I, I moved to the States about 34 years ago. So for the past 34 years, I've been going back to Italy to visit my family. But for the past uh, 20 years, I've been traveling a lot because I'm an expert in uh, intellectual property. And so and that takes me all over the world. Um, and, and I can't do this everywhere I go, but in Italy, um, you know, I've been visiting Italy for this many years, and I usually go to Italy about two or three times a year. And, uh, and, and, and it's tiring to stay in hotels. It's very personal. Um, hotels, first of all, you don't know, you never know what type of, the quality of the services that, you, that you're going to receive. And, um, and, and about eight years ago, about eight years ago, a friend of mine uh, mentioned that she stayed in a convent uh, when she visited Italy. I said, a convent? And that was the first time that I've heard about it, you know, actually being able to stay there, and, you know, and uh, pay, uh, 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 you know, pay to, <laughs> to, to lodge in a, in a convent or a monastery. And um, yeah, she mentioned that she went to this uh, uh, convent in, uh, in Naples. I said, well, I'm gonna try it. Uh, so the next time I went to Naples, see, I, uh, I, in that period, I was shooting a documentary uh, about some uh, uh, research that we were doing at the National Library in Naples. And um, uh, we were uh, uh, imaging uh, a large collection of uh, papyri that are stored in the, in the National Library in Naples. And, um, and so I, well, first of all, I had to go ahead and set up the contracts so that we could do the work. And uh, I had to go through all the negotiations with uh, uh, the director of the library. And uh, he is, uh, uh, like most Italian bureaucrats, a very difficult person to work with initially. After a while, you become friends and things become easier. But for the year, the first year, you know, just trying to uh, get the project going, I, I went to, to to Naples about four times, and uh, and believe me, Naples is a is a difficult city. It's a beautiful city, but it's very dirty, chaotic, a very messy city. Well, when you think of Naples, maybe you think of one of the third world uh, capitals like Cairo. Or Bombay, or something like that. You don't you don't think of Naples as the typical Italian city. It's a beautiful city. It's got so many treasures, but it's not really well taken care of. So initially, it, it can be a little daunting finding a good place to stay without paying an arm and a leg. But uh, so when I heard from my friend that uh, you know she stayed in a convent there, I decided, well, I'm going to try it. So I went there, and believe me, that was the day that I changed my lifestyle. At least when I travel to it, I don't stay in hotels anymore. Even when there is a conference where I can stay in a, a, a hotel that it's it's fairly good because the you know the the convention put it together and so forth, so they organized it. Uh, now I've gotten to to love uh, you know these convents and monasteries that I exclusively exclusively stay in in these places, and uh, and in Italy. Uh, the beauty of it is that you find them everywhere, in every major city, and even in some of the smaller towns. So uh, if, you, if you decide, I want to go ahead and experience Italy through uh, convents and monasteries, you can probably go almost, not everywhere, but in most places, and find a place where you, <coughs> where you can stay. And um, so um, uh, one asks himself, well, why do you want to stay in a convent or monastery? You know, usually they're, they're not really very, you know, the most comfortable places you can stay in. Uh, well, the thing is this, um, when I go into a convent or a monastery, when I lodge in a place like that, uh, usually what happens is that uh, uh, I, I, I find peace and comfort. Even though, the, you know, maybe Many, maybe the, they, they might not have all the comforts that you might find in a hotel. Still, I feel at peace and I, and I enjoy my stay. And I explain a lot of the reasons why I stay in the convents and monasteries. You, you can't find all the services 
uh, in all the mon convents and monasteries that you go to. But, uh, but most of them will at least have provide a, a good, you know, substantial breakfast in the, in the morning, which is included in, uh, in the price of the lodging. Um, but uh, the beauty of the, these convents and monasteries is that they're located usually right in the center of the city, okay? And um, not all the time, okay? Sometimes they're a little uh, in the outskirts of the city, so maybe getting there might be a little more difficult or it might take longer to get there. Italy has a fairly good transportation system, so usually you can go almost anywhere with a, with a public transport. Uh, but uh, now, this one is a, a convent in Venice, and it's only a block and a half for, from St. Mark's Square. So you're right there. Uh, it only takes one minute to go to St. Mark's Square, okay? And, uh, and, and it, you know, St. Mark's, you know, is a very chaotic place, very busy and so forth. But in this place, as you can see here, it's a, a fa fairly secluded. This is the entrance to the convent. This, uh, uh, this is the entrance of the common. But uh, since I go to Italy fairly often, um, and I have a large family, I have five kids, and uh, I can't take them all to Italy every time I go to Italy. But I, I take one of the kids with me when I go, to, at least on one of the trips. And so I, uh, the kids take turns going to Italy. So they've been there at least two or three times in their, uh, uh, you know, their young life. Um, and in the, this year was the turn of my third daughter, Margaret, and she, <coughs> excuse me, she decided to bring her childhood friend along, and so, uh, and so we were able to stay right there, and uh, uh, just a, a block away from St. Mark's, at a very modest price. Okay, um, you, it, it, staying in convents and monasteries in the past was very, very cheap. It's become a little more expensive because of the exchange rate. But uh, usually to stay here, it's about four, 40 Euro, euros uh, per person per night, okay? Uh, well, 40 euros is about $50, $50 now. But it used to be a lot cheaper, you know, three or four years ago. Sometimes, you know, when, you, when I thought about it, well, I'm paying uh, 35 to 40 euros in most monasteries, except in Rome, because it's a little more expensive there. And, and, in Rome, you might maybe pay 50 euro a night. But still, it's, um, when you consider what you have to pay in a regular hotel, that's a, that, that's a very convenient way and inexpensive way to travel. Is that now, per person? Per person, per person. Well, two people, it gets a little cheaper. It's, uh, uh, instead of 40, it might be 37, something like that. But, it, but, but you pay per person. Um, and that includes the breakfast? And that includes the breakfast, okay? In most places, now, not all of them, but it, the, the majority of them will provide at least a breakfast, okay? Now, the beauty of it is some comments will, will also provide uh, dinner, lunch and dinner for um, <coughs> a little extra. And believe me, if you can find those, I would suggest that you try it because the food is simple, but it's the best food that you can eat because it's very simple. They usually grow the, all the vegetables, and I'll show you, the, uh, uh, you know, one of them. Um, this one is in Florence. You see, about uh, two years ago, I took my oldest daughter, Elizabeth, with her husband. Well, actually, uh, I took her husband along because she graduated from college. As a graduation present, I took her husband along, too. Okay, but there's my wife and uh, my el eldest daughter, Elizabeth. And this is the convent that we stayed in, in Florence. It's a beautiful villa converted into a convent, okay? And in most places, uh, this one is something that was converted in the last maybe uh, uh, century, but in most places, these convents have been there for centuries. Uh, um, this one, in Naples, has been there for 500 years, okay? And, um,